I'm Lucia Mejia Dorantes from the Fraunhofer EC in Germany, although I'm not German. And I wanted to present an example of low-income women in Mexico City, uh, working women in Mexico City. How can their vision reshape transport policy? I'm uh, in, in charge of uh, working group number six. So uh, I think that we got a lot to do together. Um, answering the question, how can the, their vision reshape transport policy? So, um, the international organizations like the UN uh, have recognized that sustainable urban mobility is an important factor towards uh, social and economic uh, development. And that Mexico City as a mega city faces uh, huge challenges, uh, including women, children, and elderly and other people in risk of social exclusion. So, uh, as we all know, transfer projects have a, a very important social component, and they are, uh, there is a different uh, perception uh, based on gender. So, we know that, uh, uh, and Mexico is a good example of it, uh, that transport projects may even increase social inequalities. So, uh, we all know that this uh, topic has been left aside in many projects, and especially in developing countries, this is a huge topic. So, if, if, if uh, um, uh, inequality and all these uh, things have uh, been more in the spot nowadays, uh, in Latin America and other developing countries, uh, this topic is not really uh, in the agenda, let's say. So, um, the literature, uh, therefore, is very, very limited. So, uh, this was an exploratory study, a small exploratory study, with a lot of, uh, of, uh, of information to better understand mobility and accessibility for medium to low income working women in Mexico City, in the metropolitan area, let's say, because they are not most of them, or many of them, are not uh, living in Mexico City itself, but in the metropolitan area. Uh, so, to shed light on population needs, daily transport constraints, and perception about different transport systems. So, based on their uh, information, it is possible to, to highlight further steps for policy making and transportation. Um, so, as I said, it was a qualitative study, uh, 22 in-depth interviews, semi-structured. Um, a questionnaire was also handed to, to the participants uh, which, uh, in order to gather extra social economic information from them. Uh, it was complemented, complemented with uh, interviews to consultants, researchers, urban planners, taxi drivers, Uber drivers, and other stakeholders. And, other sources of information, of course, were used, and the poll of interviews was uh, one single poll. It was uh, in Mexico downtown, as I will show later. So this is Mexico City, which is also in the news lately. Well, Mexico has territory, so Mexico City is here, and this is Mexico City. So Mexico City is surrounded by two states. This is one state, and the other one is uh, Estado de Mexico, and uh, the metropolitan area covers actually three states. So this part, this part, and even uh, a small part of an, another state further away. So this is where uh, um, Mexico downtown is. Look, Mexico City is downtown is located. And, and here also we, we made the interviews, that was the poll of, uh, of interviews, where um, low to medium income uh, working women uh, came to work. And those are the areas where they, they, they live. So we have one here, six here, one even here. So it was quite mixed. Um, so as I said, Mexico City has only nine million inhabitants, but the metropolitan area has around 20, uh, almost 21. So, uh, and the trips per day are like around 31 million, so uh, uh, it can be collapsing. <laughs> uh, and very interestingly is uh, that 
although uh, one might see in the newspapers or in internet that uh, a lot of people use uh, the car, most of the uh, trips are made by public transportation. In fact, uh, uh, almost 75% uh, use public transportation and the rest use uh, private transport and taxis. Um, Mobility constraints are very uh, acute for people living in the outskirts of the metropolis. And um, very interestingly, so um, uh, in almost 15 years, the motorization rate has increased around 89% in Mexico City. But in the other states, 160, and in the other one, 309. So it's uh, amazing how then the, the population really needs uh, to, to cover the deficiencies of public transportation by, by owning a car. So that's the first step in order to, 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 to have a better living, to get a car. Um, very interestingly, uh, in peak hours, the average speed has really decreased. So um, one might have, or one might, might experience between eight to, nine, uh, to 11 kilometers per hour as, uh, as the average speak in peak hour. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, really good in order to, to, to limit the use of cars, but per perhaps as a policy is not enough. Um, uh, so there are not many uh, surveys available in order to analyze what's going on and Therefore, uh, there are some others that are, are made by um, private consultants, but are not publicly av uh, available. Um, vehicle emissions represent 60% 60, uh, 60 of the total PMT. Um, um, so most of the loans that Mexico has received in order to promote public transportation were uh, related in order to decrease uh, pollution in Mexico. That was the main transport policy uh, uh, for many decades. So it's also important to say that Mexico employment was located in Mexico City, particularly in the study area, as I said. Um, and another factor that uh, limits uh, managing public transportation is that many authorities are coexisting in this metropolitan area and um, management gets really complicated and getting along or getting an agreement on something is almost impossible. Uh, unregulated transport operators and poor land and housing policies have further complicated uh, uh, transport planning. So in the last two decades, uh, there have been many different projects. For example, the new urban highway roads, second, uh, Segundo Piso, uh, can we turn as well the lights on for a while in order to, I don't know if you're able to see, but this is totally collapsed. The, these highways are also collapsed. So it worked for a while, but I mean, they are already saturated. Uh, saturated. Um, uh, new five uh, BRT lines, we're almost, uh, there are going to be seven right now, or there are about to be seven, but as well collapsed in peak hours, so uh, not enough. Uh, a new bike sharing system, uh, ECOBICI. Of course, you need a, a, a credit card to, to, to use the system. So uh, there's one point that we uh, will discuss later. A new suburban rail, the, the last uh, huge project uh, between two different authorities here at the Estado de Mexico and Mexico City. So that was a challenge in order to, to do something in, uh, between the two states. Um, a new metro line. Uh, we have one of the best metro lines in the world. Of course, it's not enough, but uh, perhaps it's uh, yeah, one of the largest uh, worldwide. Parkimeters in order to, to um, parking restrictions in order to limit uh, parking. And uh, okay, let's, um, I'm gonna present here some other not new transport systems, for example, uh, microbus, uh, taxis, shared taxis, fake taxis, Uber, uh, and trolleybus. I really like this system. It's a really old one, but uh, um, 
public authorities are not paying any more attention to it. In fact, the, the, the lines have uh, diminished in the last, in the last while. <laughs> she's, she's really lovely, Florida, I assure you. <laughs> She'll be fine, she'll be fine. I'm just about to finish. <laughs> so as I said, some results. Uh, I don't think they're separating men and women. There was Hi everyone, I'm Mila. <laughs> well, some of the results. <laughs> um, now that we're together and everything's fine again, uh, let me tell you that uh, taxis pirata are a huge uh, thing in Mexico City. So everyone that owns a car can say, Okay, I don't have a job. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna paint my car as a taxi, and I'm gonna drive a taxi and 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 get some money out of it. But uh, so this is a fake, fake plate, fake plate, and uh, I mean it. It is a risk for women. Some results. So in Mexico City, there was this policy for a while for separating uh, the first two wagons for a while, uh, or even uh, having pink buses for, fe uh, for females. Uh, but of course, um, the utility is quite limited because you cannot assure that every woman will have a, a only female bus for all the trips that they, they they pretend to have, and the two um, and therefore later it was developed into uh, the first two the first two wagons uh, for for metro and um, BRT buses in peak hours. So there is a huge debate whether this is a good policy or is not a good policy. So some people say I don't think that separating men and women. Uh, it's a good policy. Sometimes women are even worse than men. They, even women do not respect des designated seats for disabled. Um, there, there were other uh, women that did agree that it was a good policy or they didn't even care. On my way back, sometimes I have to wait more than a half an hour to get into the metro bus. So it was real. Uh, it is really collapsed. Uh, BRTs are, are, are terrible in peak hours. I do not take a taxi uh, if I buy myself. It's too risky. Um, um, as I said, uh, there is a problem with fake taxis, so you can be you can be, you can be uh, express kidnapped in order to in order to 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 take you to the next uh, ATM and use your credit card in order to to get some money or get raped. So, for example, my daughter was almost raped by a taxi driver. Car drivers do not respect pedestrians, or pedestrians crossings is always dangerous. Cyclists are totally, totally crazy. They they drive with no precaution, even in the wrong sense. So, information was well amazing. The, the, even uh, with this small study, we can we can make a reflection to uh, where uh, the. Uh, Transport policy in Mexico City should should go to. So where we do stand, analysis of the main issues, insecurity. Insecurity, of course, is a uh, a big driver of mobility patterns. So um, if if women are are walking by themselves, they they will decide to 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 take a different path rather than using the optimal one. Uh, civic mindedness, of course. I mean. It's not that I agree, but I understand that uh, women are really tired and they were back home. They, they are not going to uh, leave their seat. They just want to sleep uh, to the way back. Many of them have to, uh, to, to, to commute for 
around two hours to get to their jobs because it's really central uh, and they live in the outskirts. So perception of the different public transport system, we, we had a huge and very fruitful discussion on how different the public transport systems in Mexico worked. Uh, a lack of traffic education, uh, education culture. Uh, everyone, when I had this questionnaire, I said, bless you. <laughs> I, um, I asked first if uh, they had a driver license because that's what we do here. But of course, it doesn't mean that, that they do drive or they do not drive because in Mexico City, uh, even without a, a driving license, they might be, they, they might take a car every now and then to, to do uh, their shopping or, uh, or escorting their kids to other places. So that doesn't mean anything. And uh, most importantly, uh, a lot of people, and even me, uh, my, my father who was the one who uh, taught me how to, how to drive. So there are around... Uh, so let's say that uh, 20%, 20 or 27% of the people that are driving or using the p private transportation, they uh, were taught by their father, uh, their cousin, their uh, boyfriend, uh, and so on and so on, how to drive. So uh, the knowledge of, 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 of how to drive in a huge uh, metropolitan area is really chaotic. Uh, they, don't, they don't follow the signs because they, they, they don't even know who, who are, who the, how the signs are or what's the meaning of every sign. So it's totally even worse. And that comes to the next thing. Careful, a new trendy mode is on the street cycling. So of course, cycling is quite, quite dangerous. And drive uh, cycling cyclists are also really they are really risking their lives uh, and doing things that they shouldn't. They shouldn't really do. For example, uh, using their bikes in the in the um, opposite sense. And I've seen it. Pedestrians are the fragile pillar of sustainable transport. That's a, a sad thing. Uh, that uh, um, uh, safety is a huge concern in Mexico City. A lot of people are run out by vehicles and. Uh, uh, it's really dangerous to, to, to walk. Jobs, location, and transport costs, and time poverty is a huge issue. It's not like you have the choice. You need to, because you need to get to your, uh, to your, your job, and your job is there. If you need to spend four hours a day commuting, then you'll do it. So it means just time poverty. And uh, this thing is overcome, uh, overcome by, by siblings and, and by neighbors and this uh, social network. So um, this uh, study had led us to two uh, to dimensions of results, but um, first I've got to say that uh, the car-oriented transport policies have, have been benefited for many decades, and of course uh, the city is um, totally chaotic and collapsed by, by car-oriented policies. Uh, the two dimensions of results I wanted to say is that general population needs, even if we talked about uh, low-income working women in Mexico, they highlighted general population needs that were not concerned only to, to, to them, but also gender-oriented. So better public transport needs, public investment and participation, as well as correct monitoring. So Mexico, perhaps in Mexico City, there's this... Uh, idea that yeah, having BRTs as a uh, private public participation will uh, lead them to um, decrease their, their monitoring on, on, on public transportation, but in fact they need to keep on monitoring and correctly monitoring and give an authority to monitor the, the, the transport and the investments uh, accordingly. So control chaotic urban expansion and seek polycentricity because there is only one main point of attraction and people are of course not not anymore living in the around the, the their working places. So push pull measures, discourage car use of course with peak hours of eight to eleven percent. <laughs> they have uh, they have uh, 
they have a good point to discourage car use, but of course there's a lack of promoting alternative modes to the car through target campaigns. Safety is a, 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 an important issue. Uh, better traffic educational culture, uh, for example, driving licenses and code. And use international, real international examples uh, to promote better coexistence. For example, in Medellin, the Cultura Metro, that really interesting to read. Um, is security in general. Uh, gender issues are directly correlated to income segments and educational level. For example, using bikes, uh, using uh, Uber in order to, 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 to be safer. Uh, it's only possible for a small segment of population. For example, uh, uh, credit cards in Mexico are around, are only available for 14% of the population. So most of them have no access, are not gonna use the bike, of course. You need a, a credit card for that. And they are not gonna use uh, uh, Uber as well in order to, to, to to use, this, uh, use it as an alternative to a traditional taxi. Um, Gender-based violence is especially relevant for low-income women, and high transport costs and lack of fair integration also uh, decrease the, the, or increase the problems that they, that they face every day. And the time poverty, as I said, is a, is a huge uh, issue circumvented by siblings. So, New transport policies should clearly state to whom they are target, uh, how they, uh, they could impact in a certain sector. And the gender uh, dimension should, not, uh, should be recognized during all the phases of the analysis and in the development as well as uh, OD surveys and correctly monitor. So I think that we have enough things to, to work for how to reshape transport policy in our group. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs>